All right, so man, this may be your, uh, you're going back to Houston, back to your hometown, and this could potentially be your, your last trip back home. I mean, what's that, uh, what's the feeling like going back to play in your whole hometown? Oh, I'm excited. Uh, all my family get to come out and support me and see me live, so that's more exciting than anything. This, uh, this season potentially doesn't count towards towards eligibility. Have, have you considered your future? Is this maybe your last trip home, or do you, or do you know it? Uh, I'm, I'm more so just playing football and giving it all I have. At the end of the day, when the season uh, ends, then I'll make that decision. But right now, I'm trying to give my all to my teammates and my coaches. So did you, you grow up, up in did you grow up in Houston? Uh, yeah, yes, sir, I did. North side of Houston. Yes, sir. I attended Eisenhower. What was that like growing up in Houston? What's your What's your memories of your hometown? Uh, kinda, kinda moving from place to place, going to different schools. But, but then again, it was kinda exciting because I got to make new friends on different sides of towns and things of that nature. How many schools you play for? Uh, two. I, I, uh, I went to Eisenhower High School, then I transferred my junior year, and I went to Heights High School and played with Cam for a little bit. So, I kind of went to two. <clears throat> Uh, you've been the number one target for both quarterbacks, Jalen. Um, what do you plan on doing um, that's worked out for you for the rest of the um, for the rest of the year and against Houston? Um, uh, that's going to play to your favor. Uh, I, I've been taking reading coverages and defenses very seriously, and then after that, it's just doing my job and getting open, and everything else should fall into place. <laughs> so I, I know as a skilled position player, you're probably not um, you probably don't take much note of offensive linemen, but what do you see in um, and Terrius Gray and Tishon Turpin just um, as their first years with the team, you know, just making an impact on the offense. Uh, like I said, we're still trying to trying to get things going. So as far as, as, as penalties and things of that nature, we're still working because of the, the kind of offense we run. So we have to just correct the small mistakes, and then I feel like we're, we're going to be just fine. Jalen, you had probably one of the more interesting uh, recruiting processes that I can remember my time covered North Texas. Was it a tough decision? And how many schools were you committed to before you ended up here? Uh, to be honest, I don't know how many schools I was committed to, but uh, it wasn't a tough decision. Once Coach Latrell called me and and the situations I was dealing with back home, it was kind of a no-brainer for me to come to North Texas. What, what were you dealing with back home? Uh, I, like I said, I was moving from different sides of the city. Uh, schools pulling my scholarship, things of that nature. Me not being able to play my senior year until the second half of the season. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be going to any college, uh, things of that nature. So when Coach Latrell called me and gave me the opportunity, I just ran with it. Why didn't you play the first half of your senior year? Are you hurt then? Uh, no, I wasn't hurt. Uh, my head coach at my old school, he didn't sign my el eligibility papers. And he said I moved for athletic purposes. So I kind of had to sit out for that. But it, it turned out to be good in the long run. So. <laughs> wow, so you got caught up in the UIL ruling? Yeah, yes, sir. Moving from school to school? Yeah, yes, sir. And that was from when, when you moved from what, Eisenhower? Yeah, to, to, to Heights. Yes, sir. I, tra I, I transferred districts. I moved closer to Scarborough, which is HISD. So I ended up going to Heights because it's open enrollment <clears throat> to any school. And so it was an open enrollment yeah. deal there? Yes, sir. Weren't you, weren't you committed to McNeese for a while and then you were committed to UNLV for a while? Uh, yeah, like I said, I was committed to McNeese, but then again, I, my standards and things of that nature was high. So I decommitted, then I committed to UNLV. I wasn't able to visit or play my senior year. They pulled my scholarship. Uh, so then North Texas gave me a chance and I ran with it. Feel like you ended up in the right place? Yeah, yes, sir. Like I said, it was all God's plan. At the end of the day, I'm following his path, and I think I'm doing a good job, so I'm going to keep going. How would you deal with that, uh, you know, mentally and emotionally going through the process of, you know, having your – moving schools, having your scholarship pulled, and that – It was – All the other things you went through. It was hard, but then again, it wasn't because of the, the life I lived and the things I'd been through. I mean, that didn't phase me at all, so I just kind of took it as a – a hit on the chin and just ran with it. <clears throat> Did you actually commit to North Texas? Wasn't it right before I you committed, signed? I committed like two days before signing day. That's why I was remembering. Okay, so it was two days before you signed? Yeah, yes, sir. 
Was it just a relief to to have a place to land after UNLV pulled your scholarship? Uh, yeah, like I said, because uh, my mom and my parents wasn't going to be able to pay for school. So at the end of the day, that kind of was all on me. And I was just happy that I can show my talents and receive a scholarship from Coastal Trail to play in North Texas. You're going to go down as one of the best receivers in program history. I mean, you're already climbing the charts there a little bit. D does that mean a lot to you? Just what you've been able to accomplish there? Uh, since, I, since I've since i been here, Coach Latrell told me don't pay no mind to that. So I really don't pay no attention to that. I just go out every day and try to give y'all my best. Do you feel like you've been able to, to do that over the course of your career? Uh, yes, sir, most definitely. Uh, as far as, as this year, I feel like I've taken the, 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 the leader role in – you know, trying to expand my game and, and really get the, the knowledge of the game down more so well than the play because I feel like at the end of the day, I know I could play good, but if I know where I'm supposed to be and I know the coverages and things of that nature, then everything else will be easy for me. Jalen, uh, how close are you and Coach Menard in terms of um, just as a receiver's coach for you and just getting the offense and rhythm and, you know, you've, You've got some experience with the offense. How close are you two? Uh, like I said, like we've been close since I got here. Uh, if anything, they just molded me into a better receiver. They they harped on me learning coverages because at the end of the day, that can take my game to another level. So that's kind of the step I took and taking the coaching. And I, I took the coaching and I just ran with it. And and now I feel like I'm I'm pretty pretty uh good right now. I just got to keep going. <clears throat> Your teammate, uh, Jalen Guyton, he actually caught his first NFL touchdown this weekend. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn from him? Uh, to be honest, uh, to keep going, uh, take every opportunity and, and try to, to smash the opportunity, which he did, and I'm proud of him. Uh, we've been talking about this since he's left. I always stay in contact with him, and I told him to just keep going because at the end of the day, I'm following his footsteps. So I told him to just keep leading the way. Bill Powell stepped up big for you guys, and granted, he's he's playing on the defensive side of the ball. But you, you're one of the leaders of this team. Were you impressed by what he did for you guys as moving over from the offensive side of the ball to go play linebacker and double digit tackles for off the bat like that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that just shows the determination and the love he has for the game. Because at the end of the day, if it was me, I would have did the same thing. So I, I I applaud him for that for sure. You guys have struggled on the road. Didn't win a road game all last year. What do you guys need to do to, to change that this season, you know, maybe starting this weekend at Houston? Uh, like I said, uh, I feel like we, we on the road, we came in too, too, too anxious, I'll say. I feel like we just got to settle down and, and do what we do every day that we practice and, and make routine plays like Coach Latrell always harp on. So at the end of the day, if we do that and, and we get our explosives, then we'll be all right. What do you see in Houston? I mean, they've they've had a, a pretty you know they've had a they've had a solid team over the last several years. I mean, as you scout them, granted they haven't played. I mean, what do you expect from these guys? Uh, they are they're a good physical defense. Uh, they like to come down and hit, make plays. They try to keep a lot of people in the box. They try to play a lot of mind games. So therefore, we really just gonna have to do what we do and execute our plan because at the end of the day, it's not about them. It's about us. Hey, Dion, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. So uh, last week was a little bit of, of a struggle for you guys defensively. What did you guys learn from that game that you can take forward into the Houston game? I mean, we made a lot of mistakes on the defensive end, but I feel like that type of performance, like you could either get better from it or just stay the same. I feel like this is one of the opportunities that we can learn from and just try not to make those same mistakes that we did last game. those mistakes what, what what do you think happened in that game that, that hurts you uh miscommunication and a big one uh was missed tackles you know um that's just like one of the main parts that uh made us unsuccessful on, on the defensive end so today we really harped on focusing on communication and tackling How important are the fundamentals um, that your position coaches and the defensive coordinator might have taught um, just during practice the last couple of days? Wait, can you say that again? Uh, what were some of like the fundamentals that your position coaches and defensive coordinators um, might have been 
to, uh, just talking to you guys about during the last couple of days of practice? I mean, uh, just running to the ball and um, driving on contact, you know. Uh, we missed a lot of tackles because uh, some guys weren't running to the ball. So that's just one of the few things that uh, we talked about that can make our tackling better. What is it that you see in Houston as a program? I know you guys had to have film from this year, but some of the guys that uh, are on this team were the same guys from last year, like Tune and various other receivers. What do you guys anticipate you'll see from Houston? Uh, a team that's uh, athletic, you know, uh, they're linemen, like, like they want to get out and run. And uh, we know they have a, a good quarterback and some dynamic receivers, so we just want to kind of stay in shape and just know that they want to play fast and we got to match that tempo. What do you see in um, Devontae McCray as he's in his first year playing Division One football? What do you see um, from him personally and just what you see the kind of impact he brings on the defense as a Juke coach transfer? Uh, Devontae, uh, he brings in a lot of energy. You know, that's one of the guys that uh, he's not afraid to call someone else out. And, uh, you know, we need that, like, in the, on the defense. He's going to give 100% effort and call guys out whenever they're not. The road has been kind of a struggle for you guys. Didn't win a road game last year. What do you need to do to change that this year, starting with this game in Houston? Uh, just trust the, trust the process, you know. I mean, um, just... Go go out on every game and feeling confident that we have the right game plan to be successful. And as long as we truly all we all buy into that and we all believe that we can win a game, I think that'll help a lot. Have you been seeing a lot of attention earlier really this year? You had such a great year last year. It seems like teams are really trying to take you out of the game. Have you been seeing more double teams and just chips and things like that to try to contain you? Uh, yeah, but I mean, um, it's. I feel like it's pretty much the same as last year. I mean, being uh, playing like a three three man front defense, uh, I'm expecting double teams, so I can't really say it's that much different. And one guy that really helped you helped your defense out this last week was Caleb Howell coming over from the offensive side of the ball. And I granted he's been there for a couple of weeks, but last week was kind of the first time that you saw him really make an impact. What was your impression of what he did for you guys? Uh, no, I I told Caleb, I mean, uh, I'm proud of him, like to transfer from offense to defense and play like a huge role was was huge, and we needed that. And I thought he did a really good job.